Okay guys, so sticking with the cells and the movement across cell membranes then, the next part of this unit is about the use of the light microscope to view animal and plant cells. So how do we actually see these cells in action? We're going to use a microscope and there's a few things that you need to know about how to use a microscope. So what we might use is something called a light microscope. You might have used these in school. It's this thing over here. Okay, you have usually this eyepiece that you look down, you put your specimen on the stage here, you clip it down and then you look under the microscope and you might have to use the focusing knob to try and get it in focus. And you can actually see these things under microscopes. Something you need to know at GCSE then is about the magnification. So the way that we calculate total magnification of a cell is we, we times together the objective and the ocular magnifications. The objective comes from these lenses around here, which you can change, and the eyepiece itself has level of magnification. So on low power then, it has an objective magnification of times four, so the cells will look four times as big, and also you have this ten times as big from the ocular. So we use this equation at the bottom to calculate it. So eyepiece power times objective power, so eyepiece times objective equals total. So eyepiece times objective, ten times four, is going to be, I don't even need to calculate it for this, it's going to be forty times the size of the original cell. That's what you're going to what, what it's going to look like under the microscope. On medium power then, we go up to 10 of these lenses, so this next biggest one will be 10. So 10 times 10 is going to be 100 total magnification. Flipping around the equation a bit at the bottom then, we've got total magnification and we've got our objective. Now, to be fair, I've made it easy for myself because I already know what the answer is going to be. But the way you would do this just to rearrange the equation would be 400 divided by 40, which lo and behold is going to be 10. So I'd have 10 there. Brilliant. So now that we know how to magnify things, how do we set this up? So you may have done this in class where you have this cover slip over here. You might have had your cheek cells and you might put them onto the slide. Okay, so one of the ways that you can do this then is to add a drop of methylene blue, which is a indicator or a staining solution that will stain for cells. The reason why we add the staining solution is basically so you can see more detail about the cell underneath. So you do this first and then you can add your specimen. Specimen is just a fancy word for something you're going to look at. You add that on top of it. The way that you've done it in class is most likely to rub off your cheek cells, put them onto the slide first and then put the drop on top. But that's okay. As long as you know it roughly in this order, then it's okay. Because as long as you know that the last step is to mount this cover slip using a mounted needle, you press it down until the staining solution covers the whole cover slip. And it's that then that you put under your microscope to look at. As long as you know the rough order, it's fine. So light microscope and electron microscopes. The ones that you have in school are most likely light microscopes. I very much doubt that you have electron microscopes. They are very expensive and they take up a lot of space. But the great thing about light microscopes is that you can use live cells. So one of the pros of a light microscope is you can use live cells or things that are alive at the time. Okay, They are also a lot cheaper, hence why schools use them. But the issue with light microscopes, so the cons then, advantages and disadvantages. One of the cons of using a light microscope is that you have very limited magnification, which means that you can't see those really tiny things such as um, you know bacteria and things like that. You are, you are limited by the magnification that you have on that microscope. Now, one of the great things about electron microscopes is you have a much larger magnification. One of the reasons why they are called electron microscopes is because they can go right down to that level. So they have a larger magnification. So you can see very small things with this one. But the problem with it is that you have to use dead cells. They cannot be living to go down that far. Okay, They are also more expensive, but you only need to know a few pros and cons about each one for your GCSE exams.